Hello. Uh, welcome to Mom Cave Live, where we may have lost our minds, but we haven't lost our sense of humor. I'm Jen. It's a Friday morning, and I'm live here with the author of I'm Just Saying, Gabrielle Ribeiro. Hi, Gabby. How are you? Can I call you Gabby? Do you go by that? You know, I have like 17 nicknames, so whatever suits you, whatever oh, rolls cool. out the mouth, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I say I'm Jen, but never Jenny. I hate Jenny, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Own it. <laughs> it makes me think of a horse. Okay, great to see you. you so, so everybody, um, feel free to jump in and comment and ask questions about her book. Um, you can get it in all the places, of course, on Amazon. But um, tell us, what was the inspiration for this book? Well, I, you know, I write a lot just for fun and, you know, what I do for a living. Um, but I've always like, you know, I, I listen to everything. My mom always has a lot of advice and I have a lot of advice for my daughter and all sorts of things. But, you know, you think you're doing this great job and then something like a pandemic hits and then everybody's stressed and you're dealing with things that you, you know, never thought that you'd have again and right. that your daughter go through or you know your son or whomever um so we had you know i mean it was interesting we had just a little bit of a, of a challenge you know and i saw my daughter starting to struggle with self-confidence and isolation and things like that um so i just felt like it was I, i'd been sort of tweaking you know the idea for a while but i said you know something like i have to put this all down on paper <laughs> Yeah. Just in case of anything. Um, but really just at a time where I felt like, you know, more than ever, maybe other people needed to hear some stuff that's, you know, a little bit hybrid, tough love, but, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of honesty and just kind of, you know, giving yourself a break, more importantly, and figuring out what is important and what's not. So that was really the inspiration was her. Um, but, you know, moving forward, I felt like a lot of people could benefit from it because it's just been a crazy time. Yeah, totally. Well, you know, we're all about giving yourself a break. Um, maybe I might give myself too many breaks, but that's how I survived this thing. Um, what I thought was as cool as I was reading about your book was the concept that um, as parents, we always have advice for our kids and our parents had advice for us, but it's really hard to hear advice from your own mom. Yes, it is. Or, or any, anybody close to you. I mean, because they're the most truthful, I get window, you know, and they're sometimes the mirror, you know, that we don't want to see. And as much as we can't stand it, they actually do know more than you in a lot of ways. Right? So that's, that's things. Nobody likes that. And also it's like, you know, any, any kid will perform better in school and, and push in their chair and do all of that stuff, but they won't do it at the kitchen table at home. It's yeah. that, you know, it, that kind of disassociation. So it's, it's exactly what I thought. I'm like, well, if people hear this from another source, like, you know, like she tends to listen to her godmother and her aunt, you know, a little bit more mm -hmm. than Times, you know, when with little things. Um, so I think, you know, when you hear it from a second party, a third party, sometimes it sinks in a little more. I like this concept of like, you can give advice to other people's kids and I can give advice to your kid and we can just all do that for each other. And that way <laughs> they'll listen to somebody. And I think it was also like, I think that also we waste a lot of time in our youth and also in our 20s and even in our 30s worrying about stuff that all of a sudden we realize really doesn't matter. Right. Like, totally. you know, okay. Is anybody looking at me? Does my outfit look okay? Who cares? Mm -hmm. you know, do you like it? Are you okay? Right. You know, we, we, we spend an enormous amount of time stressing about those kind of things. So, you know, another purpose of that was just, you know, not to, not to be cliche and say, let it go, but to well, understand <laughs> that a lot of this stuff doesn't really matter mm -hmm. today, you know? <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. I found myself having this deep conversation. I thought it was deep with my son the other day in the car where I was trying to explain something to him. And I was like, I totally get how you feel and what you're doing. Because when I was your age, that's how I felt and thought too. But I had, but I went through a lot of um, bad stuff in order to figure out that was totally wrong. <laughs> and like, as a mom, you want to save, I want, you know, I want to save you from not having to go through learning the lesson, but I can't because that's part of growing up. So like, no matter how much I tell you, you got to learn it yourself. I love that conversation because I had that just with my friend the other day too. Like, you know, she, her daughter was going through something and I said, yeah, like, as much as you wish you could stop, she has to feel that, you know, and, and so does my daughter and you have to feel a heartbreak and you have to feel all of these things to either, you know, learn how to survive them or to understand what is better than that. Yeah. You know, you have a really bad heartbreak and then all of a sudden you appreciate other things oh, more, totally. you know, or you look for other right. things in, in, a, in a partner, you know, that kind of stuff. So I right. think, you know, that kind of stuff teaches you. So the book isn't meant to be like, I know it all. It's just like, here's what I got. Here's what right. I learned. You know, <laughs> I, I feel better, you know, knowing mm -hmm. these things. Um, and maybe you will too. Yeah. And it's like all down on paper. Yeah. So People can peruse it at their own leisure and not have to like hear it in the moment when it's hard to hear, right? Um, 
What what would you say is the single most uh, life changing piece of advice you have there? Changing, I think it's uh, acceptance. You know, and and for a lot of reasons, like I, I grew up a very heavy kid, and okay, you can change a lot of that stuff, but like just an example, my my shoulders are this broad, my hips are this broad. Like I'm not gonna look like right. you know a stick figure ever. It doesn't really matter what I do. It's, I could exercise for, for 15 out of 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I could you know eat just water and grapes, and that's it. And like it will never happen. Um, you know, some people want blue eyes when they have brown. Some people want you know X when they have Y. And I think you have to just realize, okay, it, what you have is really awesome. Think about how yeah. many people don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, and take what you have and figure out how to make the most of it because we are all different. But I think it is very difficult to accept that also happens a lot more teenagers and a lot more growing up. And it's, it is heartbreaking to watch that from the outside. And I also spent a lot of time and then I said, okay, you know what? This Or like I started running in my 40s. I'm a terrible runner. I'm slow. I've been doing it for years now and I still am not any faster or any better than oh. I did when the, in the beginning. And I get frustrated, but I'm like, this is just my pace, okay? Like at least I'm doing it and that's it. And it helps and makes me feel better. But no, I'm, I'm not going to get any faster and that's okay. Running in your 40s is a win, first of all, <laughs> at all, okay? That's, that's the mindset you have to that's train the mindset. Yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know if it's still this way for girls, but when I was growing up, I felt like everybody was so encouraging of like, you can do anything you dream of if you try hard enough. You can be all you can be, which is a lovely sentiment. But in a way, it sets you up for a lifetime of anxiety and depression I think, sometimes, you know, because you're not. Me, you're like, what's wrong with me? I was told right. it's all going to be OK, you know. I was told anything is possible, but like, no, not not anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lots, but not all. <laughs> that's right. And, and I don't know, you know, everything's relative, but to have that acceptance, as you're saying, to finally accept like, yeah, I'm not going to be the fastest run. I love to sing. I've always loved to sing. And growing up, I thought I was going to be like a Broadway star. I am a horrible singer. I'm almost tone deaf. I've had lessons in many places. And I'm married to a musician with perfect pitch. He's tried. I've, but then I got to be a certain age. I'm like, it's not going to happen. I can sing as loud as I want in the car and the kids can laugh and I can have fun. But like, that's who I am. I am the girl who is a little tone deaf, but loves to sing anyway. And it doesn't have to be my career, right? And that's awesome because that, that's joy. That's actually the definition right. of joy is you found something you really like. You don't have to be perfect at it. You know, or even like speaking another language. So many people are embarrassed to try. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's awesome. And even if you just speak a few words, somebody else will be appreciative of it. You know, I stopped myself right. always when I was younger. I don't want to, in case I can, I, I, if I can't do this right, you know, then I'm yeah, not my accent isn't it. good. That was yes, always, you no. Know, and me. the point is like, just, just try. Yeah. You know? And I think that that's what we get hung up on is this perfection, like you said, and that, you know, everything has to happen the way I dreamed it. it it's never going to be like that. No, life is never that way. Um, no. <laughs> and and you have one child? I do, just a daughter, and she's 13, going to be 14 soon. And the 13, some days, 21, some days, eight is, other yeah. days, you know. <laughs> Sorry. It's a roller coaster. Everyone told me, and she's amazing, but it's, you know, you see all of these things that you went through too, and it's all happening. Like, it's all still happening, you mm -hmm. know, like the click mm -hmm. school and the this and the totally. that, and, you know, and you really wish that you could just erase it all. But like we said, you have to, you have to do it. But, you know, she's, she's happy and, you know, much better since the pandemic, which is really nice. And um, okay. I think it's interesting because same thing, like, you know, I'll say something and she'll be like, I, I know mom. Okay. And then she'll cover her ears and all of that. But then I know it has sunk in because I see her doing the thing that I subtly, you know, and maybe not so subtly talked about. <laughs> <laughs> little That's by little. amazing. Yeah. When when they do it and, and you just notice quietly and you don't say anything, that's like, it's hard not to say anything, but yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's the win. Yeah. Um, it's, have you noticed, you were, you mentioned clicks and, and that, and in that age. So I also have a kid, I have a boy who's a little bit younger than that, but in that same sort of age and stage. Yeah. And um do you notice, so do you think that it's the same that it was when we were growing up with the clicks? It's different. I find they move freely back and forth. I find they're, they're, they're a lot more social than I ever was. Oh, um, I like you know, there's, uh -huh. there's, there's frequent hangouts. There's this, it's so-and-so will wind up, you know, at a place and, you know, 40 of them will be there, you know, or they'll all go to Starbucks and everybody's there. So I think it's interesting because it was, it was more isolated. I mm -hmm. think when I was younger, at least for me, it was you're in one group and that's it. 
and yeah. there's a, you know, getting out of it, you know, <laughs> but if, yeah. if you're okay with that, that's fine. I feel like they, they blend together. Um, I was always worried about bullying because mm -hmm. I said, you know, it was like, okay, when we were younger and then all of a sudden a very, very yeah. huge arc, um, you know, in social media and all of that. But I find for some reason, my mother, my daughter said it the other day, she's like, well, things are just different now. You know, if you're mad at somebody, you just don't bother with them. You don't spend your life making, you know, look, that's just here. <laughs> and that's very mature. Next Good. Be different. But I was, I was interested to hear that perspective is that maybe that kids are finding it easier to, to move on with nonsense than oh, they wow. were before. Um, or that they're just more, you know, focused on other things that, that they don't want to, to let this kind of stuff, you know, drag I don't know. Um, you know, I'm sure it, it does happen. It has happened. There have been, you know, mean girl things. And of course, that still exists. But I don't know. I think it's more inclusive today because kids are different. And they're, I think they're a little bit more used to being social in other ways. I think the phone, good or bad, has this way of connecting people now, connecting kids in a different way. Frequently, she'll say, oh, yeah, so-and-so lives in another. Yeah, I met this person. Um, you know, she's friends with so-and-so. She lives in the next town over. That never happened. Right. When I was little, I, I knew kids at my school and that was it. Yeah. Your world was much smaller. Yes. And, and now it's bigger. Okay. And so speaking of things like phones and all, do you have any advice for um, young kids about the phones, the social media and all that stuff? It's, you know, I mean, I could speak till I'm blue in the face. I could dish advice. Right? Yeah. Um, I try to just make sure that no matter what, I can only say what I do for my own kid, just try to insist that she's present with special things. And we do a lot of, you know, even things that are not quote unquote special, they're, they're meaningful. You know, we're, at, we're in the car, we're having a conversation. That's kind of right. stuff we do these days. So trying to just understand the difference of putting it in your hand when you're bored versus when you really need to, to engage with mm -hmm. someone. You don't want her to miss out on things or not answer totally. a message, but there's no reason to sit for hours and scroll and scroll and scroll and watch mindless videos. Yeah. I don't know what that does for you. <laughs> um, I can tell you, it you know, um, wastes a lot of time. And in the moment you're having a great time and then it's three hours later. So you, yeah, if, if adults like us have trouble with these things, I know it's got to be really hard for the younger. It's hard. I have to have yeah. this, this thought all the time. I sit down and watch a TV program and I can't do it without a device in my hand just to play a game. And that's bad too. So I try to work on that. You yeah. know, for whatever reason, I, I it's just become a thing. You know, I, I guess I've always been like that. I used to like paint when I was little, you know, always something while I was doing something else. So I don't Me know. I, you know, just yeah. being, I cannot do one thing at a time. No, you have to do multiple. But I am actually listening to you. I'm not playing a phone just so you know, like it's. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Well, see, since I'm using my phone for part of this, I can't. Uh, you can't, anything. right? I <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 an. I want to show everybody. I'm gonna I'm gonna push to the um, comments your book. This is it. This is I'm just saying, and it should show up in the comments with a link where you can find it on Amazon. Real advice for real girls in a real world from a real mom, and that's what we're all about here. Real moms. So I'm I'm so glad that you came and talked to us. Um, if anybody has any questions for Gabby, you can um, put them in the comments. Or can you tell everybody where they can contact you on social media? Yeah, absolutely. It's just um, you know the best way is I run a group called the Mogul Mom, and that really helps people, um, you know, entrepreneurs and moms who want to get either launch their own thing or are currently doing their own thing, and nobody really understands them because they're in a different crowd these days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. A really great resource. So it's just simply Gabriella at themogulmom.com or find me on the Facebook page or the website. And I'm happy to chat with you. Um, yeah, I hope the book is useful and helpful. And, um, you know, it's a great gift for other people too. Cool. Well, we'll have to do another talk someday about the mogul mom because I have many questions about that. Um, we'll but yep. So everybody uh, check out I'm Just Saying. It's, it's really fun. It's a great book. And thanks for talking with me today, Gabby. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Um,